Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Hermite's equation. Hermite's equation is a second order differential equation which has the following form. Looks like y double prime minus 2xy prime plus a parameter lambda y is equal to zero. Now, of course, what's going to happen is since the coefficient of y double prime is equal to 1, there are no singular points or regular singular points. However, we can say certainly that 0 is an ordinary point for this second order linear equation. So note, x equals 0 is an ordinary point like that. And so I'm going to write down a Taylor series solution of the solution to this equation, center of the origin. So now write y as the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, a k x to the k. Then this implies our standard procedure that y prime is going to be the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, leaving the index at 0 for simplicity of a k k x to the k minus 1. And this implies that y double prime is equal to the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, but that's really, that's really a 1, that's really a 2 of a k times k times k minus 1, x to the k minus 2. So that's the first step in solving a differential equation where the, we have non-constant coefficients using the method of Frobenius or using the ordinary point method is to do this. And so now this term is easy to simplify, so now our differential equation is really the sum. k goes from, I'm going to write 2 now, so 2 to infinity of a k and then k and then k minus 1 x to the k minus 2, that's certainly, now of course, these expressions are the same, because when k is equal to 0, I get nothing, when k is equal to 1, I get nothing in this equation. So these two sums are identical to each other, they just index at different, different starting indices. Then I have a negative 2xy prime, so that's going to be a minus the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, really 1 to infinity, of negative 2k, and then a k x to the k. Now, I have x to the k minus 1, but it's hit with an x, so that negative 1 goes away. And then finally, I have plus the regular series over here. k goes from 0 to infinity of lambda a k x to the k, like so. Okay? And now I can group these two terms over here, and this, of course, is equal to 0. And so let's group these two terms over here. So this first term stays the same. It's going to be the sum k goes from 2 to infinity of k times k minus 1 a k, x to the k minus 2, and I'm going to write minus the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity of what? Of, we're going to have a 2k, 2k minus lambda, so I have a minus, minus turns into a plus, that's going to be a k, and then an x to the k. And really, of course, this k over here is going to start at 1, so I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this index down by 2, right? So let's do that over here. So now, the key with this argument, and this is, of course, is equal to 0. Now, I'd I can only add series together whose powers are the same order index, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift this terms over here. I'm going to replace this k equals 0 with a k equals 2. So I'm going to add 2 over here, which means we have to subtract 2 over here. That's a 2 k minus 2 minus lambda as a k minus 2 if we do that. Okay, so I shift the index by 2, and now I can write the recursion relationship. So this tells us over here that the sum k goes from 2 to infinity of k, k minus 1, and then a minus 2, that's of course, and of course these shift down by 2 as well, minus 2, a k minus 2k minus 2, like that, and then we'll have a, those are multiplied by a k minus 2, x to the k minus 2 is equal to 0. So when k is bigger than or equal to 2, we have this re reversion relationship over here. That, and there's of course a minus lambda as well, so then over here I have to subtract off a minus lambda, like that. Okay, great. And then those are all times a k, like that. Okay, so let's maybe rewrite this in a little bit of a nicer way. Let's rewrite this term. Just make it a little bit nicer. So we're going to have a minus what? We're going to have a minus 2 times two k minus 2 minus lambda. Those terms are hit with an a k minus 2, a k minus 2, and those terms are all in brackets, times x to the k minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, that's much better. 
And so now we can solve this recursion relationship. If we solve this recursion relationship, what do we see over here? We see that this tells us that k times k minus 1 ak is equal to this 2k minus 2 and then a minus lambda times ak minus 2, like that. And so now typically what we write is the following. So now I'm going to shift this over here. So I'm going to shift this recursion relation to write that a k plus 2, I replace these k's with k plus 2, is equal to 2k is equal to 2k minus lambda, all divided by, that's going to be a k plus 2 and then a k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus 1. A, K. And so this is a recursion relationship for the coefficients in the Fermat equation for K bigger than or equal to zero. Okay. Now the important thing to realize here is that there's an important case of this. If we choose this value lambda, if we choose lambda to be 2n in this equation, then when K is equal to n minus 2, when we look at K equals n minus 2, then this would imply that A n plus 2, when I get my plug in K equals n to this, would be a what? Wait a minute. Uh, when I plug in, if lambda is 2 and I plug in k equals n, then I'll have a 2n minus n, that'll be a 0. So that would be equal to 0, right? And that would imply all the coefficients past this point, a n plus 2k, would be equal to 0 past that point as well. So in other words, there are polynomial solutions. So in this case, polynomial solutions exist. There is a polynomial solution. There's a polynomial solution when lambda is equal to 2n, okay? Great. And so let's investigate that. So let's work under the assumption that lambda is equal to 2n. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a particular value for an. So if I select, I'm going to select lambda to be equal to what? To be equal to 2n. And then I'm going to select the number an at the top of the series, the nth coefficient, to be 2 to the power n. Okay. And of course, if you plug in small values of n, you're going to see that these numbers will populate in the right way. Okay. So that's going to be my choice of an. And then what's going to happen over here? So let's plug in this value of an. So what will a, and I'm going to flip this uh, relationship over here. Then what would this be if we flip the relationship? Then I'd have a k would be what? Would be a k plus 2, and then times the quantity what? Times the quantity k plus 2 on the top. k plus 2, k plus 1, over 2k, 2, and then k minus n, like that. Okay. So that'd be my recursion relationship flipped. So what would I say about a n minus 2? This would imply that a n minus 2 would be 2 to the power n. And then if I plug in n minus 2, I'm going to have an n, and then an n minus 1 over here on the, in the numerator. In the denominator, we have a 2 and then a negative 2. Negative 2 like that. OK, great. Now let's plug in a n minus 4. Well, that's going to be this number over here, 2 to the n, 2 to the n, n, and then n minus 1 over 2 times negative 2, and then times the next thing over here in the term, which is going to be a what? I'm going to plug it in that, so I'm going to get an n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 2, n minus 3, over 2, and then a negative 4, right? And we can start to see the pattern we're going to do one more over here, so one more over here is going to give us what? I'm going to do a n minus 6, that's going to be a 2 to the n, then an n all the way down to n minus 5, and then a 2, and then a 2, and then a 2, and then a negative 2, then a negative 4, then a negative 6, OK? And so now we can sort of see the pattern over here. From this pattern, what's going what's to persist? I'm going to write down the a, so hence, a n minus 2k. Well, all these are, and then these are all negative over here. So it's going to be negative 1 to the k, so negative 1 to the k, 2 to the power n. I'm going to put an n factorial on top. And then how many 2's can I pull out of the denominator over here? Well, I can pull out all those 2's, so I have a 2 to the k over here. I have a 2 to the k over here. I have a k factorial. And then what did I, I pulled out an n factorial, but I really was missing a what? I was really missing an n minus 2k factorial over here. So in other words, those are the coefficients over here. And so now what can we see? We can see now that our solution to this, our polynomial solution, we can write it out in closed form. So our closed form solution to this, our Fermat polynomial, this implies that hn of x is going to be the sum. k goes from 0 up to the floor of n over 2, because k can't be bigger than n over 2, otherwise this doesn't make sense. We'll have a negative 1 to the k, a n factorial over k factorial, and then an n minus 2k, n minus 2k 
factorial. And then we're going to have an x to the n minus 2k, and then times a 2. So it's going to be a 2x to the n minus 2k. Let's make sure that works. So we have the 2 to the n, right, over there. And we have a 2k, 2k, that's a 2, that's an, that's a 2 to the negative 2k over there. And this is really the coefficient of what? This is really the coefficient of x to the n minus 2k over here. So this function over here is our nth Hermite polynomial. So this thing is our Hermite polynomial. And we're going to see in further videos that this Hermite polynomial comes up when we study the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillators. When we look at the Schrodinger equation with a square function potential, this function arises when we do the one variable quantum harmonic, uh, quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator because the functions that you get when you have a square potential are going to arise when we study this Hermite equation of order 2n. So we're going to see these functions, actually not 2n, but 2n plus 1, the odd modes are going to be the energy levels of that quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. So these, while it may seem like these are just abstract functions, what's going to happen is exponentials, Gaussian functions times these polynomials are going to form a basis of solutions for our quantum, um, harmo quantum me mechanical harmonic oscillators we'll see in further videos. Thank you very much.